In this tutorial, we're going to discuss the mechanism of action of the beta lactam and along with that, I'm going to give you the answer of the question that your people are asking time and again and we're just confusing our beloved students. Come to the point, the very first point, the beta lactam antibiotics. We have penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, monobactams. These all are actually the beta lactam. Why? Because Penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, monobactams, they all have this particular square structure known as beta lactam ring. Okay, this particular structure. This is common in all these antibiotics. That's why they are given the name is beta lactam antibiotics. And they all have got a slight difference. You can say differences in the structure of this second structure that is the thiazolidine ring so we have actually basically two rings number one beta lactam number two thiazolidine now this beta lactam is available in all but there is a change regarding thiazolidine ring how like penicillins have both the rings whereas cephalosporins have the same rings but there is a kind of change available in this thiazolidine ring in sense of uh, the double bond that is available in uh, carbon number two and three well here in thiazolidine ring they have a kind of double bond available regarding the carbapenems they have got difference in the sulfur by the carbon so here we have basically in the structure of the penicillins sulfur available in uh, carbapenems this sulfur is replaced by the carbon along with that we have some other alkyl chains Regarding the monobactams, the name indicates mono means one, and bactam is actually the beta lactam ring. So, in the monobactams, we just have one beta lactam ring that is free, and there is no any kind of attachment of the thiazolidine ring. That's it, very simple understanding regarding the structure of the beta lactams like the penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. Come to the point towards the mechanism of action. Very simple point. They all have got same mechanism of action because of this beta lactam ring. And here also comes the question that you guys are asking time and again, that if they have got same structure, then what is the need to use all one, two, three, four? What is the need to use penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, monobactams? We can go through just a single antibiotic. We can just use penicillin. Then what is the need of using cephalosporins also? Or you can ask carbapenems, monobactams. Then what is the need of using all these? Why don't we use only one? Only one. The point is very simple. First, let me tell you people about the mechanism. After that, I will clear you this question. The mechanism of action is very simple. You guys know that bacterium has got cytoplasm and cell membrane on the cell membrane the bacterium has penicillin binding protein which is also known as transpeptidase this is a kind of enzyme okay after that we have a cell wall and you guys know this very well that the cell wall is made up of the nam nag units and acetyl muramic acid and acetyl glycosamine so these units when combined together they actually make the peptidoglycane cell wall now the very important point here regarding the cell wall synthesis is the penicillin binding protein transpeptidase which is actually functional to make the peptidoglycane it means it plays a very important role how like very simple just concentrate from this name neck there's a kind of protrusion elongation of the pentapeptide the same is the elongation from the next chain of the peptidoglycan now these two chains they actually they are actually prolonging the pentapeptides and these pentapeptides are a kind of cross-linked by means of this transpeptidase penicillin binding protein this is actually what this is doing the cross-linking here of all these pentapeptides what happens next when these chains are cross-linked actually the peptidoglycan cell wall is synthesized this is how the transpeptidase is actually synthesizing the cell wall now here comes the mechanism of action of the penicillin cephalosporin scarabacans monobactams in short the beta lactam antibiotics how these 
actually inhibit the cell wall synthesis you guys know that these are actually known by the cell wall inhibitors okay cell wall inhibitors beta lactams are also known as cell wall inhibitors now how they are actually going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis very simple when we indicate the beta lactam they actually inhibit the penicillin binding protein what penicillin binding protein this one here we gave our beta lactam they will come and will inhibit the penicillin binding protein now you guys know that it is actually a transpeptidase which is responsible to cross link these pentapeptides to synthesis the cell wall so when we take the beta lactam they will actually inhibit the penicillin binding protein you can see this transpeptidase what will happen then its job was to cross link now we gave we indicated the beta lactam they will actually inhibit the function of this transpeptidase so you can say that there would be cross linking available then so when there is no cross linking then there would be cell wall synthesis so like this the beta lactam actually inhibit the synthesis of the cell wall very simple and in the meanwhile when these beta lactam inhibit the penicillin binding protein these release some auto lysins in the meanwhile okay now what those auto lysins are going to do just concentrate the term auto lysin auto means self lysins means breaking so these auto lysins which are released then they're responsible to break further the cell wall now here two functions are seen the very first the inhibition of the penicillin binding protein second the release of the auto lysins by the penicillin binding protein so one there won't be the synthesis anymore because transpeptidase is not available to do its job and number two auto lysins there is a kind of breakage available now so in the meanwhile no synthesis and further destruction synthesis is decreased and destruction is increased so you can say like this the cell wall is a kind of becoming weak okay because of our these beta lactam what happens next is that very simple concentrate here we have bacterium you guys know that it is surrounded by the cell wall and here we have the fluid in which it is available what will happen when there is a, a kind of destruction and no synthesis happening in the cell wall then this fluid will start diffusing in the bacterium now the fluid has entered into the bacterium what will this fluid do then simple it will start generating the osmotic pressure and now this bacterium has got no cell wall you guys know that cell wall is providing a structural support to the bacterium so now the support is not available what will happen simple this fluid will exert the osmotic pressure and this bacterium now which has got a very feeble very weak uh, cell wall because of which the cell membrane will not be incurred by any structural support means there is no any support available for this cell membrane now so now this membrane cannot maintain this pressure for a longer period of time so what will happen then this bacteria will lyse you can say lysis will be seen of the bacteria that's why the beta lactam are known as bactericidal because they are going to do the lysis of the bacteria so this is how the beta lactam actually perform the job now coming to the question again if all the beta lactams have got the same mechanism of action then what is the need to go for using all of them why don't we use only one of these all beta lactams simple answer with the passage of time you might have heard that penicillins are no more functional because most of the people have developed uh, the resistance now this resistance is actually developed by the bacterium that is available inside the living body now how the bacteria develop the resistance we have discussed this in our last lectures so in this lecture i will give you a hint to us again regarding the beta lactamase our these bacteria they actually develop uh, some enzymes now is beta lactamase now what is the job of these enzymes very simple guess from the name beta lactam is enzymes that are going to catalyze the beta lactam ring this so we all have beta lactam ring in our these beta lactam antibiotics so what they are doing they are actually responsible to break the beta lactam ring so if they break the beta lactam ring then what will happen then if you are indicating this penicillin so this beta lactam is here we have penicillin and beta lactamase so we indicated penicillin to do its job to come to bind to the penicillin binding protein so here these bacteria have developed the beta lactamase these beta lactamase will destroy 
the beta lactam ring of the penicillin so now this penicillin is no more able to go and bind to the penicillin binding protein why because it's functionally neutral that is the beta lactam ring has been destroyed by the beta lactamase enzyme now again here the question rises is that all of our beta lactam they have the beta lactam ring so this ring must be destroyed by these beta lactamase enzymes the answer is yes it must be destroyed but in the beginning i told you guys that we have the beta lactam ring available in all there is a change available in the structure that is of thiazoridine because of this structure they have got different power to go and to act on the penicillin binding protein penicillins they are very weak when we indicate these beta lactamase will fight means will break the penis the beta lactam ring of the penicillin and if we indicate the cephalos there this beta lactam ring will be broken by the beta lactamase in a little bit lower rate whereas regarding the carbapenems this these antibiotics they are actually more resistant to these beta lactamase they are actually you can say powerful as compared to cephalosporin and penicillin the same is a strategy for the monobactams they also have a kind of resistance against these beta lactamase enzymes so what they will do they can go and come and bind to the penicillin binding protein without feeling any hesitation means the reason behind is they are more powerful than cephalosporins and penicillins so this is why we are switching from penicillins to cephalosporins then carbapenems then monobactams when those patients develop resistance if our patient is developing the resistance against penicillin we will indicate the cephalosporin and if that patient again is resistant then we will go for the next one carbapenems and if again then we will go for the monobactams so like this we are actually using all these and we are not sticking with only one antibiotic and that's all from my side i hope you got and if still you have any question feel free to ask us in the comment box and thank you for watching